All right, welcome to another episode of Implant Pokemon. Uh, this episode's actually going to be... I'm doing the voiceover after the game. I usually like to just do the voiceover during the match, but uh, it just didn't work out. So here I am playing Embor Audino. All I can see from my opponent is a Cleffa, so it could be anything. And we start off with an Audino. We have energy in our hands, so we'll definitely be hoping for the Donk here. So I grab my two Vulpix and a Tepig with the Collector and attach my energy and hope for heads with Powerful Slap and I don't get it. So my opponent here uh, got lucky or I got unlucky but that's the way it goes when you play with Audino. So now my opponent plays a collector so we'll get to actually see what he's playing. So I see a Tepic Vulpix Reshram and I know this is a Reshabor deck. It's kind of funny the deck I'm playing with now I more or less swapped out my my rush rams for Audino, so similar decks except for I'm gonna be flipping coins for damage and he'll be blue flaring for damage. So my opponent eeks, wakes up, and I'm pretty happy about that. So now we're gonna go for the nine tails, make sure both are in our deck here, and that's really what's gonna get this somewhat slow and clumsy deck moving. So we see there that I do in fact have both of my nine tails. And we'll go ahead and roast reveal. So we get another Tepig, which is nice. So shouldn't have too much problem getting both of my, one of my Embor up so that we can load fire energy onto Audino. Not sure there why I didn't lay the fire onto Audino. I guess I was hoping to get a double colorless off of the oak, but that did not happen. And it looks like I'm going to go ahead and communication for the other nine tails so that uh, I guess the main draw engine of my deck is ready to go here on turn two. Fortunately, I don't have any energy. So, we're going to hope for heads again with Powerful Slap. I think I debate there grabbing a Pig Knight. And we get the first prize. And there's the double colorless. So he's got a Reshram with a double colorless on it. If he has an ability bore with a rare candy, he could be going for the turn two blue flare here, which would be pretty good for him. So let's see what he grabs. It's either going to be nine tails. Nope. It looks like he does have the rare candy in his hand. So on his second turn, he is going to be uh, blue flaring, which is pretty awesome. Looks like the promo ability Embor. So there's the one fire energy. Let's see, he's gonna oak for the second one, I assume. And I've already cut out most of the dead. Uh, my opponent here definitely took his time uh, with each move and I cut out a lot of the dead space, but looks like I have a bit here that I missed. So yeah, we're gonna have a two turn two blue flaring Reshram, which, which is pretty scary. There's not many decks that are going to be able to uh, really compete with that. Reshram's a really strong Pokemon. Embor has an awesome ability. So, we got lucky. Top decked a energy retrieval, which means I'll be able to use that, grab two fire, and uh, essentially draw six here. Which is why nine tails is so good, and don't quite agree with people not playing nine tails anymore. It is catcher bait, but it's also very strong draw. So I'm not 
don't have any rare candy, which is unfortunate. I have the energy that I would need to use the uh, other Embor to do 150. So obviously Saging here, hoping for a rare candy, didn't get it. And anytime you play Sage, you're always going to have this awkward moment where you try and figure out uh, what three cards you want to send to the discard. So it looks like I almost think about uh, grabbing a fire and an ability board, but uh, I'm about to make the correct decision, which is hang on to the junk arm. That's going to be more valuable in the future, and there's three fishermen in this deck, so discarding energy isn't really going to hurt me at all. So unfortunately, I'm only going to be able to attach a double colorless to Adino. And I'm thinking I should catch her the Embor here. Let's see what I actually do. And I think Mm. I think I should have captured up the uh, Embor, so I'm not just letting him blue flare me again. Probably would have been a better move than just ending my turn, but... Uh, saving the catcher for later may be a smart move as well. So now he's got his nine tails going, so he's going to be able to start drawing three cards a turn. And this I did not expect. So he drops RDO, and I believe, and I check, he is actually weak to Audino. So um, the turn two blue flare I was kind of afraid of, but now we could get two prizes here. Promoting Audino, catching up RDL, and that would put us right back in this game. So he's going to blue flare for the second turn in the row. And let's see if he catches anything or if he's just going to have to blue flare Tepig. And he just takes out the Tepig. So I have another double colorless. So at this point I probably should uh, be working on building up my Tepig. Probably should have done it last turn. And then perhaps on this turn I could have uh, Inferno Fandangoed some more energy onto Audino. So, four fire back in the hand. Gonna catch her up RDL. And the game was lagging pretty bad for me, so looks like I have to click on it again. So this would be pretty awesome. We're gonna have, we just need two heads here. And we're gonna take two prizes so that's what it's gonna come down to so at this point I'm telling my past self please use Pokemon communication and I do so we're gonna get a pig knight here and I can see that there are two rare candy in my deck, so one must be prized. And so two heads, and we get four tails, and that breaks my heart. So he's probably going to be able to knock out Audino, and thanks to RDL's ability, or Pokebody, or whatever it is, he's gonna actually take two prizes with whatever he knocks out with. RDL, so he's going to take a nice lead here. Poke body, that's what it is. So we interview questions to get the lightning that he needs. That will be his manual attachment for the turn. And I assume he's going to have the fire energy needed to power this thing up.
And let's see if he grabs an energy retrieval. Yep. So he'll be able to get the two fire energy he's going to need here. So my opponent's off to a great start here. Second turn, blue flare. Third turn, blue flare. Fourth turn, ozone buster. So in four turns, he has taken four prizes. And it's going to be tough to come back on this one. I'm down three prizes. I'm going to do my roast reveal. I have a couple switches in my hand. We get the ability Embor up and running. So now we can start laying down fire energy wherever we want. Down to 14 cards. And it's the start of my fifth turn, so Nine Tails can really help you get right through your deck and get everything that you need. Except for rare candy, apparently. So, I do lay a fire energy onto Nine Tails. Uh, probably a mistake. I have two switches in my hand. Didn't really need to waste that energy attachment. So, I see I have four in my discard. I do play a burn tower. Um, pretty much most Embor variants will run Burn Tower. Flipping to get a extra energy out of your discard pile every turn is pretty strong. And here I see my opponent disconnected. And I guess I will just wait 90 seconds. Thankfully, because this is not live, um, I will just go ahead and do my thing. My opponent will rejoin us, which is great. And while I wait for him to reconnect, I'm just going to power up Audino. Using Inferno Fandango to put a ton of fire energy onto Audino because I don't want to whiff again. And apparently I'm just going to go hog wild here. So six energy onto Audino, which probably isn't a strong move. That is a lot of energy. And if memory serves me correct, there are only f 10 fire energy in my deck. Uh, and I've already got six of them on Audino. So at this point, it could mean my Embor gets stuck. So powerful slap. We get the two heads, we get four tails unfortunately, but we get the two heads for the knockout. 160 damage, take our two prizes, and uh, sort of claw back into this. And as we can see, my opponent is back. I don't know what it looks like when you get disconnected and come back. I don't know if he's just going to come back and see his RDL gone. But I guess he can see Audino and realize what probably happened. So he's going to Fisherman, he's going to get energy, and probably Blue Flare. My Audino and my 6 energy into Oblivion here. And put himself down. So his 5th turn here, he's going to get a 5th prize on the 5th turn. Very f quick game here. And we see the one, should see the second fire here. And goodbye, Audino. So my opponent's down to one prize. I finally get rare candies, but they're not very helpful. 
don't really need to roast reveal at this point. There's cannot be that many cards left in my deck. They're all in my hand. So I have to junk arm for communication. Although I probably could have just used collector to get an Audino, but it doesn't really matter at this point. I doubt my opponent's going to play Judge or N. It's any Embor variants typically going to rely on having a large hand, so they're not going to disrupt themselves. And now we'll fandangle all that fire energy back onto Audino. Which is a long, tedious process. And we'll see how many I put on. I imagine I'll probably do all six. Although it does not look like I have any fishermen left in my hand, so... I can see one fisherman in my discard. This time I see that I have a switch. And I assume we're going to go for a catcher. Get rid of the sages. I'm not going to be able to use it because my deck is so small. Rare candy don't really need either, so a very easy decision that time with the junk arm. You know, I need to slow him down. It's going to be tough for him to put four energy onto Embor to retreat, and then another two onto Reshram to Blue Flare for the win. I guess it's possible. I just laid down six energy, so it's he should be able to as well. And again, four tails on a powerful slap. I uh, don't really know what that means, so if you do, please let me know. And my opponent again is thinking through everything here. It will be his sixth turn, and I imagine he's going to... I don't know why he put an energy onto Ninetales. He may not play Switch in his deck, and uh, he may be doing that just to retreat in the future. I really don't know. No rush. I'm always looking at my discard pile just to keep track of my energy. And not quite sure. So we see a second energy go on to the Reshram. Let's see if he's got a switch. And he doesn't. So he's going to bring up my Embor. That four retreat cost is pretty hefty. But I do have a switch. And he doesn't attack. So he does not get his sixth prize on his sixth turn. Don't think we're going to be able to stop him, though. One blue flare will take out just about everything on my bench, so. I think we're going to try for a catcher or a junk arm or some way to get a catcher. Try and take out the Reshram with energy on it, but we don't get it. And I think we're just going to have to powerful slap here. And this time I get five heads, which is very annoying. So, 200 damage. And all he needs is one fire energy, and he will win this game. So he's got the fisherman, and that's pretty much it for us. We were down 5-2. to two. Uh, We clawed our way back to 2-1. to one. Um, Unfortunately, if I could have just gotten the two heads on the RDL at the beginning of the game, uh, this might have been different, but that's what happens when you flip coins. Sometimes it doesn't go your way, so... 
Just waiting for the funny kid to do his energy attachment and uh, and get his victory. I'm not going to concede. I will just let him take his victory. So there's the fire energy. There it goes. 120 damage and Audino loses. <laughs>